Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk a little bit about barrier technology. Barrier technology is the technology that keeps sound in the room and from going out of the room and keeps sound that's out of the room from coming into the room. There's a lot of misconceptions about barrier technology and it's often confused with the processes that go on inside the room. But there are some subtle differences and uh, those subtle differences can cause major uh, issues when it comes to sound quality. So let's get back to the basics. Three things that happen to sound. Absorption, diffusion, and reflection. Those are the only three things. I don't care what you read. I don't care what others say. This is what the laws of physics that we currently have to deal with will tell us happens to sound. When we're dealing with barrier technology, which of those three is critical? Which two of those three is critical? Is absorption a process that uh, we, we consider in barrier technology? Is diffusion a process we consider? Is reflection a process that we consider? So we'll address that uh, in the next step. Thank you. All right, let's look at barrier technology in terms of our three things that can happen to sound. We have absorption, diffusion, and reflection. What is barrier technology and how is it used? If we have a sound source and we have a listener, and we want less energy at the listener, then we construct what's called a barrier. The quickest way to stop sound from reaching our individual inside of a house, a building, or whatever, is to construct a barrier. We live and, and work and listen to music in rooms, and we're surrounded completely by barriers. Some good, not, some not so good. But a barrier is the quickest way to uh, isolate sound between the source and the receiver. All right, now with our barrier, which of these three technologies apply? Is it absorption? Is it diffusion? Or is it reflection? Well, I think we can rule out this one right away because it's mainly uh, not applicable in this situation. Diffusion is uh, a term that must be used for sound fields uh, and, and addressing the distribution of sound within a room or within an environment. So that's really not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about distribution. We're talking about isolation. So what are we doing with reflection? Well, sound energy from a source strikes our barrier and what happens? It's reflected back to the source partly and obviously partly goes through the barrier. So there is some absorption occurring here and there is some reflection occurring here. So reflection and absorption are the two main things that we look at for, for barrier technologies and thus the uh, isolation properties that those technologies produce. All right, now let's put some numbers to barrier technology and try to get a feel for how the technology really works. We uh, discussed reflection and absorption as the two main principles when it comes to barrier technology. So let's look at some definitions and get a handle on it. One of the uh, terms used for barrier technology and isolation technology is sound transmission class or STC. What is sound transmission class? It's just a decibel reduction in noise. So when you see a number, uh, STC number, you know that the barrier technology that that's applied to reduces noise by that factor. Now what does that factor mean? Okay, let's take a look at that. Well, first off, the measurements include frequencies from 125 hertz to 4000. So that's not really low frequencies, it's more uh, upper uh, or more middle frequencies to the higher frequency range. And this is a criticism a lot of times with sound transmission class that it really doesn't include a low frequency. So we really need with barrier technology to look at less than 125 hertz. And any manufacturer of barrier technology worth his uh, salt, if you will, will have data below uh, 100, 125 cycles. So it's a decibel reduction in noise. And let's cite a few examples to uh, help you uh, understand how that works because it's not linear and uh, it's a little bit difficult to grasp. So let's uh, put some uh, figures to it to help illustrate the point. Okay, let's put some numbers to uh, sound transmission class and, and try to get a feel for barrier technology and, and how it really is measured and, and what it means to us in, in terms of perception of sound, in terms of loudness, if you will. 
So a 10 dB reduction is perceived as half as loud. So like I said uh, before, it's not linear, it's uh, logarithmic. So a 10% reduction in, in noise is perceived as being half as loud. So if our barrier reduces noise levels by 10 dB measured one side versus the other side, uh, it'll be perceived to, to the people involved in, in the structures as half as loud. If we take 40 dB of, of measured noise in this particular example, and we know that it's half as loud then as 50 dB of measured noise. So just that 10 dB difference contributes a lot to perception and how we hear sound. Um, an 80 dB noise on one side of a barrier measured 50 dB on the other side is a 30 dB reduction. So that translates to an STC or sound transmission class rating of 30. So that'll kind of help you give you a, a little bit of idea. Barrier technology is difficult. It's uh, hard to do. You have to be very, very careful with the way it's constructed. The arrangements of, of the materials and layers are quite uh, important because we're dealing with vibrational acoustics. And we're going to talk about that in our next video on barrier technology. We're going to talk about materials and their densities and how to arrange those materials in the most appropriate way to get the best reduction in noise levels uh, with our barrier technologies. Thank you.